All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about insulation. What does the, uh, the insulation in your home look like behind your drywall? Is it done correctly? What are some of the different options? I'm gonna take you through the house that we're building right now and show you the method that we use. And I'll mention a couple of other different things that you can do as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is actually done, it's done in the insulation process, but it's done before this vapor barrier goes up and it's done before the actual insulation goes into the studs. So what we're gonna be looking at is you can see this, uh, this white between the, the two by fours here. This, this is an outside wall right here. So anytime you've got a couple of two by fours that are gonna directly abut to each other, Yes, they're abutting to each other. You, you can't fit insulation there, but there's still the chance you can get like a little pinhole of air that could come through there because a two by four, it's not always completely straight. Um, this right here is not part of the exterior wall. That's why that's not done. And you can see there's a little, probably like an eighth of an inch gap there. So anywhere where we've got exterior walls, they're gonna caulk that seam there and that's going to eliminate any chance of air getting you can through. You see that. that they do it the same way where the bottom of the wall meets the floor. Again, it's it's the same thing even though the 2x4 is sitting on top of the subfloor and it's a heavy wall and yeah, it should form a tight seal, but this just gives you extra backup that you're not going to get anything air penetration through there. And then again, that is called the top plate of the wall. So where the top of the wall meets the top plate, which is the area where your ceiling's gonna go, same thing there. Even around, anytime you've got a window or a door, you've got this solid piece of wood, which is called a header. It's typically a two by 10 or a two by 12. Again, when they frame this wall, they're putting that header in before the windows go in, and you've got seams around the header where it meets the wall. So again, they're gonna caulk that as well. Now, if you're building a new home, it's not required that they caulk where those seams are budding. It's not required that they caulk where the, where the floor meets the, uh, the, the wall. But again, it's just gonna give you that extra insurance that you're not gonna get any air that's penetrating through those areas. It's just the right way so to do it. So that's step number one of the insulation process. Step number two is putting the insulation in the walls. Now there's a few different methods that you can use when doing this. This right here, this is your standard bat or piece of insulation that gets put into the stud cavity. Another option is what's called blown in bats. This is kind of like the, the product that they use when they're spraying the attic. It's a blow in insulation, it's out of foam, but it's little pieces of insulation, kind of looks like snow. And what they'll do is they'll actually put this, uh, it's like a fiberglass, almost like what's on the underneath of your mattress. It's that type of material. It's like almost like a cloth material. They put that around all of the exterior walls inside of the plastic here. And there's holes inside each area where there's gonna be a stud cavity. And then they come with the same machine that they blow in the insulation in your attic with, and they blow in the insulation in every stud cavity. And what that does is it just gives you that much more of a, of a tight pack. It packs that, that much more insulation in each stud cavity. And it, it probably adds, you know, when you're talking about insulation, you're talking about R values. That's how it's, that's how energy efficiency or, or insulation is measured. So this is an R13 bat of insulation. If you do a blown in bat, you get an R15. The other nice thing that it does is it helps with sound deprivation from the outside. So if you're living in an area where you've got noise around you, maybe near an airport or something like that, it'll give you that extra sound barrier as well. Then after they blow in the blown in bats, they then cover everything again with this plastic. This plastic actually has an R1 insulation value, and this is a vapor barrier. So this goes between the insulation and the drywall to keep any moisture that may enter the house. It's not supposed to, but if it does, it keeps it behind as opposed to allowing it to meet the drywall. 
Okay, one of the other insulation methods that you can use besides the regular bat of insulation or the blown in bats would be a spray foam insulation. And what you can do is actually spray foam the perimeter of each stub cavity and then put your insulation in or your blown in insulation. Again, that'll ensure that if you ever get any settling with your insulation, I mean, after 15 years, this piece of insulation might drop down a little bit on the top. If it does, you've still got a block there if you've got the spray foam surrounding the perimeter of the stud cavity. That would be option number three. Option number four, which is the best and most efficient and costs the most, would be spray foam insulation. That's where they're gonna take and fill each cavity with spray foam. Now we use this above the basement wall there's an area between the floor and above the basement wall that's called the box sill. And in most homes, that's your biggest area of heat loss. So that's an area that you want to fill with spray foam and want to ensure that there's no air penetration getting through there. You can do the same thing in your exterior walls here. You can spray foam each stud perimeter, each stud cavity, and you can also do the same with the ceilings. Instead of putting in the blown in insulation in the ceiling, you can do spray foam in there as well. So with your ceiling, I mean, that's where most of the heat goes, it rises. You wanna keep that in the house. There's a couple other, other little options that I'll, uh, I'll quickly touch on. All right, on. so we've got this area here where the exterior wall meets the ceiling. Now, one thing that they can do is they can put up almost like what's a, what, like a weather stripping type material that you'd have on your car door. So they can put this weather stripping up at the very top of the wall and take it around the whole perimeter of the house. That way when they put the drywall up it forms a complete tight seal. It's just another little thing that you can do to ensure you're keeping all of your hot air in the house. When it comes to insulating your house and having it being energy efficiency, it comes down to a lot of little things. There's not just one thing that you're going to do that's going to give you a really nice energy efficient home. There's a lot of little things to do. The insulation portion of it is one of the biggest ones, but there's just a lot of little steps you can take to make sure your home is the most energy efficient that it can be. So that's the insulation process. Now there's a couple of things that, again, you don't have to do, but I would recommend that you do it if you're building a home. One of them would be insulating some of your interior walls. So this wall behind me right here isn't an exterior wall, so it's not required to have insulation per building code. But because you've got plumbing here and a bathroom here and a bedroom on the other side of this wall, it's a good idea to insulate all of the interior walls of the bathroom. That way, if little Johnny comes in here and has got to use the bathroom, little Susie doesn't hear a peep when she's sleeping. It's just a nice thing to do. If you are going to have bedrooms kind of abutting your, your living space and you're going to be up later than your kids watching TV, you might want to insulate that whole interior wall. If you can, I would insulate every single interior wall. It's, it's probably, I would say, $1,000 to do that in your home, and it, it does make a big difference. It's something that you would definitely be thankful that, that you did in the future. Okay, well, now we're down here in the basement, and I'm going to show you what it looks like before they actually spray foam the box sill area. So that area in the house I was talking about before that contributes to the biggest area of heat loss in a home is what's called the box sill, that area above your basement wall and between the floor. So let's take a look. All right, so this area up here is the basement box sill. So it's the area that's in between the top of your basement wall and beneath the bottom of your floor. Kind of see that you've got this cavity up there. Now on the other side of that roof sheath, or not roof sheathing, but wood sheathing right there, the siding does not come down there and you have no insulation on the outside of that. So the only way to insulate that is to insulate it from inside and to spray foam this entire cavity. Now it's not required that you spray foam that. You can simply put a piece of bad insulation in there but it's not as efficient as spray foaming and filling that entire cavity. Because what's gonna happen as construction progresses here, people are gonna drill penetrations through there. 
to vent the furnace, the water heater, run electrical out there, so on and so forth. So if you spray foam every little nook and cranny of that crevice, that cavity there, you're gonna ensure yourself that you're not gonna get any air penetration or bugs or critters coming in through there. All right, one other thing I wanted to talk about is if, you, if you've got an exposed basement, so you're building a home on a lot that's got a little bit of slope from the front of the lot to the back of the lot, so you're gonna have these nice windows along the back side of your basement. Well, when they build the house, they're gonna do a four foot wall in concrete, and then the rest of it they're gonna frame. This is called a knee wall. And when you do that, you wanna be able to drop your siding on the back of the house all the way down to grade. So this is about where ground level is outside. So in order to keep everything nice and energy efficient, what you want to do is frame this wall like we did here so that you can insulate it, drywall it, trim around the windows, but, but, but the main part of doing this is to insulate it. Otherwise, if you're just running your concrete wall all the way up and then you're putting furring strips on the back of it so that you can basically nail your siding to it, this concrete wall even though it is insulated on the outside with a one inch insulation board, it's not as energy efficient as framing a wall and having insulation in the wall. Sorry, they're doing siding outside. The generator keeps going off. I think that's my cue to end this video. Thanks for watching.